This program is made possible by... 46% of non-retirees believe they can't afford to retire. American Senior Benefits agents help retirees find solutions, aiding your journey to retirement and financial security. More at wichita.americanseniorbenefits.com. Moving can be stressful. Whether your move is local or long distance, two men in a truck can help. More at twomen.com. King Senior Solutions, educating clients and offering solutions for Medicare beneficiaries. Personally selecting the plan that fits your needs. More at kingseniorsolutions.com. I'm Katherine Ambrose. Welcome to a new show, Empowering Seniors. This is a half hour program designed to equip, educate, and empower seniors and their loved ones on specific topics related to aging and all things senior. The show stems from an educational seminar series that we do live monthly. And the leadership at KPTS thought it'd be great if we could bring some of this information direct to you in your home. For our inaugural show, we've brought Dr. Nikki Buckaloo from Oklahoma City. So Nikki, I thought you'd be the perfect guest to help introduce the show and help get us rolling because the idea with this first episode is kind of introduce the program Empowering Seniors and what we intend to cover and where we're going with all I, of this. I'm honored, I'm excited to be here and um, I hope that we can share some great information and I look forward to seeing all the future episodes because I've kind of seen your lineup already so it's pretty exciting. Well, thank you. Yeah. So the funny thing is, is that we're both realtors and our husbands are realtors and um, this is kind of an unusual thing for realtors mm -hmm. to get involved in. So how did a pair of realtors become senior advocates and get involved in senior education? Well, I know how I got involved, and I have a pretty good idea of um, the fact that we're doing some same things very similar. In 2000, I'd been selling real estate for about 10 years, mm -hmm. and I got bored, went back to, to school, got my master's in counseling, and interestingly enough, I was counseling people in nursing communities and assisted living and mm -hmm. senior housing and found that um, a lot of their circumstances were, in my opinion, unnecessary. And it was like, as a therapist, I couldn't really help them after the fact. Mm -hmm. And I went back and told my husband, I said, you know, we could actually, as real estate agents, be m better support and more helpful to them before they made the move. And it was just one of those moments where you go, this is really what I should be doing mm -hmm. with what I've learned as a as a therapist, right? So I'm no longer a therapist. Um, I'm a real estate agent. I call myself a coach now. Mm -hmm. And from that experience, uh, our real estate team turned into a national coaching and training company, which is how you and I hooked up. Um, right. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now we have agents all over the country, and you're one of our top agents working with seniors. So. I think that may be one of the best honors for me being here. So well, thanks for that. Well, thank you. Yeah. So you and I actually spoke on camera in 2012 when I interviewed you about your business. Oh, that's right. And yeah. you suggested that uh -huh. my husband and I focus on seniors then. Oh, and I thought about that. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's so nice. But so you're I, a slow learner. Is that what you're I telling? am a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm, I'm with it now. Yeah. So I guess I was thinking yeah. that that was limiting, and what I didn't realize was how much mm. help is needed out, yeah. out there and yeah. what we could bring. And I've been having so much fun, and I thank you for that, yeah. because this is a whole new world for us, mm -hmm. and we are loving mm -hmm. every minute yeah. of it. So. Well, I think what you're experiencing is, is true of a lot of people out there, in the real estate world especially, is that they're just out there selling houses. Mm -hmm. And you went through some life stuff right. that mm -hmm. caused you to rethink your career, right? right? Both mm -hmm. family and personal. And I think when you said, I want to have a business that has purpose and meaning right and what does that look like and now here you are mm -hmm. every day you get up and something like this this show in and of itself is about adding purpose and meaning to other people's lives right, right. yeah 
Mm-hmm. So, and uh, I think we're both like that yeah. way where I have to feel very passionate about what I'm doing. I have to feel like I've really got a purpose and that I'm doing something that benefits other people. Yeah. And um, so. So that's is, what we're going to share today, right? Absolutely. There's some stuff that hopefully we'll, they'll be able to take and use mm-hmm. and they'll benefit from, mm-hmm. yeah? Right, and so to help seniors right away kind of understand what this whole thing is about, I want to talk about um, the book that you introduced me to. Like, I think maybe the first book you introduced oh, yeah. me to, and you brought it yeah, today. Yeah, I brought it today. The yep. David Soley mm-hmm. book, yep. How to Say It to Seniors. This little book from we bought on Amazon, you know, after going through a, a master's degree and, and a gerontology bachelor's degree, nobody had ever introduced me to this book, How to Say It to Seniors. And the sub, subtitle is Closing the Communication Gap with Our Elders. Mm-hmm. David Soley, you're right. You know, it, it was my aha moment when I read that book that we as real estate agents and other people working with seniors were missing part of the picture, mm-hmm. right? Like we'd go in and talk to them about selling their house and they'd go, you know, yeah, I need to sell my house, but there was something else going on and I wasn't quite sure what it was. And he talks about those developmental phase of life tasks that people are are grappling with in Mm -hmm. some cases, right? Some people breeze right through, no problem. Other people may be dealing with these in a little bigger way, Um, one of them being legacy, Mm -hmm. right? How many people do you meet, Catherine, that their home was their forever home? Right, a lot. Right, yeah. Yeah. And and maybe they raise their children there, Mm -hmm. and they see that as um, their legacy even. When they pass on, they expect their kids to have that home, or they expect that. So we deal with that pretty often. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then there's the the developmental task of maintaining control Mm -hmm. and how he puts it is maintaining control in a world where time is running short, right? Maintaining control in a world where time is running short. Mm -hmm. And they're dealing with the fact that they may need to give up their home and and they're not necessarily choosing it. It's kind of the lesser of two evils, right? Mm -hmm. And so he talks about that. But what I love about it is he talks about it in uh, in relationship to the developmental phase of life tasks of the middle agers, right? Uh Those of us who are trying to help our parents. Right. Do you ever have clients that clash with with their kids? Well, absolutely, and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because they're they're looking at life a little differently Mm -hmm. than their middle-aged kids are looking at life. And so, but you know, you had asked me uh, from my doctoral research a Mm -hmm. little bit about um, that third piece, right? Right, which I thought was very interesting. Well, you know, it didn't come up in his book, but it's in a lot of the other academic literature, and Mm -hmm. that is that we're seeing a lot of people who are meeting with us to sell their home Mm -hmm. who didn't ever expect to be in the position they were in. Right. They didn't Mm -hmm. plan for that. Mm -hmm. Like they bought their forever home. And I have one person I talked to that they were in their third forever home (laughs) and they were selling it. And that forever home meant something to them. Like Mm -hmm. it represented their identity and who they were. And now moving someplace else didn't quite match up with what they had in here. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a very difficult um, decision, not just transition, but decision. And that's why I love what you're doing with your seminar series, because it's that pre-planning that helps people get from here's where I am today to here's where I'm going to be tomorrow and be okay with that. Right. Right. And sometimes it's really not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just different than what they expected. Is, right. that, is that a fair statement about uh, what you're Absolutely, doing? absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, and what I thought was interesting about the developmental life stages is thinking about toddlers and the terrible twos uh-huh. and teenagers and that all throughout our life as yep. humans, we are developing and that- It never we, stops. Right, it never stops as we go into our 60s and beyond. Mm-hmm. We're still developing, we're still experiencing those life tasks, something to accomplish. And so what you're saying about maintaining control um, and sometimes if it feels like the kids or a doctor or other people Mm -hmm. are dictating, that's that's very hard in that. Um, We named Mm -hmm. our series Empowering Seniors because we want seniors to feel in control. Mm -hmm. They are in control 
everyone wants to be in control mm -hmm. of their own life and make their own decisions. Yeah, they want to be informed so right. that they can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we uh, a quick story. I, we went to the airport one day, and, uh, and I think we were in Austin, and we were going through the. Uh, security checkpoint mm -hmm. and there was a couple in front of us that had not traveled very frequently and so they were kind of trying to figure out what they were supposed to be doing and, uh -huh. and so I asked if I could help and in the course of that I asked where are you headed and the couple said she said well we're headed to see our daughter and I think it was New York and I said oh well that'll be fun and she said well no not really uh oh and it reminds me of that the the movie we just watched uh, book club yes um, you know mm -hmm. and and it's, she wasn't excited about going to New York. And I said, well, I'm, I'm curious. Why are you not excited? And she uh -huh. said, well, you know, there becomes a time in your life where you're no longer in charge uh -oh. and your kids take over. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me, and it was the look on her face when she said it that caught my attention. And she felt defeated, I think. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to help her in that moment. But I just said, well, I hope that it is better than you expect it to be, and I wish you well. And they went on, but I thought about that conversation. Mm -hmm. And in these seminars, I love what you're doing is you're basically giving them back their power. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And saying, you're in charge. You mm -hmm. tell your kids what you want. Mm -hmm. And by the way, tell your kids what you want later just in case you can't do it exactly. for yourself. Right. Yeah. And, and we I, talk about that every month. I have a whole list of questions to ask you. Awesome. <laughs> so... All right, so one of the things that we're doing um, that's similar to, to what, you're, what you've talked about before is all of our topics um, in the live series are called The Truth About, yep. and then the topic continues. So mm -hmm. speak to that about the truth, it's kind of the empowering oh, truth. So important. I love that you're doing that, and I think that what, you know, what I think of when I think the truth of or the truth about mm -hmm. is we're not going to dance around topics. Right. 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 I know you guys are very direct or very candid in your approach. And mm -hmm. uh, even to the point where I've been to seminars before, and I'm sure you have, where um, there's a sales pitch at the end. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like gave you some great information, but if you want the rest, uh -huh. you got to sign up for it. Right. And oh, that just drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you only get a partial truth. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. You have to just, yeah, exactly. You have to pay for uh -huh. the rest of it uh -huh. or sign up for something. And then the other thing is, I think that a lot of times there's an agenda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The person right. in the front of the room is telling you something because they're trying to direct you to take action, which will ultimately benefit them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I love about your series and the empowerment part of that and the truth part of that is that we're going to tell you, and sometimes it's not even something you want to hear. Right. And sometimes, by the way, it may not benefit me. Exactly. <laughs> for exactly. me to tell you this. Right. Like, I love that you're telling the industry secrets, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in real estate, you know, these guys that are, I, I, I hear this a lot, especially in the seminar series, is, well, tell me about those postcards I get where people say they'll pay cash for my house, right? Right. And fair market value. Mm -hmm. I love how you're kind of exposing mm -hmm. some of the industry truths out there about some of the strategies people are using. Um, and they're not necessarily scams. Right. They're legitimate business practices, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're not fully disclosed, right? Right. So. Well, and some of them even look handwritten. Yeah. It's very, some of those things yeah. are very confusing. And confusing is a good word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. So what they really want to know is, what about this is true and what about this is not true, right? Right. Well, and it's designed to confuse. It is, yeah. This is the generosity generation. You know, we, we both know Michael Mara that wrote The Seven Levels of Communication, mm -hmm. and that's something that I've really taken to heart, and I've, I think I've heard other people talk about that too, yeah. and that sharing information with no strings attached um, and the right people find you. Um, but you're also just putting good out there. Yeah. We're not, um, it's not one of those programs like you were talking about where they almost kind of lock the doors right. and yeah. um, you get your meal after mm -hmm. you fill out the form yeah. and set your appointment. Um, yeah, I've been to some of those too. Mm -hmm. But you know, Catherine, I, and you mentioned, you know, we do a seminar series too that's similar. And what I realized after having done one for about three years and then starting a new venue People are going to be a little hesitant. I guarantee you there are people listening to the show today mm -hmm. who are going, oh, what's the real deal? Right. And, and it'll take a while for, for people to believe you, mm -hmm. right? Like they're going to make you prove it. And, and that's okay. Absolutely. That's not a problem. Right. They should. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad that they do. Yeah. 
So planning and uh, preparing to, to face these things oftentimes is a process, not an event. I had someone yeah. call me and say, oh, I'm really interested in your seminar series. Now, if I come to one, am I going to know everything that I need to know? Um, it was, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's similar right. to like our background in real estate. Oftentimes, realtors would say, um, why would I go back to that training or go to that convention? I've been there before. And what I would always tell realtors is that you keep going to training because it helps your mindset. It just mm -hmm. is there to just kind of turn the knob mm -hmm. a little bit, open you up. You might hear something different that you didn't hear another time. Sure. Everyone presents something differently. Right. Every time we speak to an expert, yeah. um, and, and it all begins be to tie things. together, too, don't Absolutely. you think? Absolutely. Well, it just helps people process. Sure. While people are talking, you're mm -hmm. kind of making those connections mm -hmm. in your head and thinking about what you want to do. I've been to many classes where I listen to a speaker or a lecturer, and I'm taking notes. And then what I didn't realize is that I missed two or three things they said right. while I was focusing on that one point, mm -hmm. right? And not to mention, I think you've got a different lineup of panelists every time anyway. Mm -hmm. So one person may talk about downsizing or liquidating or decluttering in one way from one perspective, like from the organizer's perspective. Right. And another one may talk about it from the um, stager's perspective or for the real estate perspective or the move management perspective. Mm -hmm. Two totally different perspectives on the same topic. Right. Which will help people put things together a little bit better. Right. So, and I've noticed that when my husband and I attend a seminar or attend something and we're on the plane heading back home, he has something to say that's different than what I, I heard. You know, you pick up different things. Yeah, and so for sure. just being, um, being in a learning environment, I think, is, is really good for people. Well, I, let me just say this about that. I, I think that there are people who want to be empowered, mm -hmm. and that's why they're coming. And I think if they take away one thing from this segment or from your seminars or from a conversation with someone, and they feel empowered, they'll continue to do it. If it's not empowering, they'll quit doing it. Right. Because that's their goal is to become empowered. So I love that's like I so that's why I say I love the name of the series because that's going to attract people who want to be empowered. So what age groups do you think benefit from some of the topics that we're doing? Because we'll be talking about downsizing, decluttering, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, legal issues, scams, just everything that you could possibly imagine that seniors might have an interest in. And I've been told some people like, oh, you can't say senior if you're talking to boomers, and my feeling is like let's just be real right and yeah. uh, own your age <laughs> so yeah we all benefit from education so they're going to benefit to the degree that they choose to benefit naturally but i i will say that um there are a range of ages out there where you know people are in denial about getting older mm -hmm. and then there are people who are perfectly content with their age and i had a lady tell me just last week she said i'm 89 and i said well that's awesome and I really didn't know how to respond to her and her response to me was well I'm quite proud of that <laughs> and, That's I, good. and I said as you should be mm -hmm. um, you know and and I think that there they people reach a point where it doesn't matter what their age is they're gonna be proud of who they are but you got those people out there who are a little bit resistant mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. and so um, that's okay you know that's okay but Millennials um, are, it's interesting because they're listening to this content and they're, I, I have two kiddos in that age group, they're in their 20s, and they're listening and they're listening with a little different perspective mm -hmm. because in their mind they're thinking, well, of course I'm empowered. I can do and be anything I want to be. Why wouldn't you be at 90 be able to do that? Because mm -hmm. they grew up in a little different world. So it's an interesting education for them that not everyone feels the way that they feel. Mm -hmm. Well, and some millennials, by the way, are helping aging parents or sure. grandparents or yeah. great aunts. Mm -hmm. And um, so even the millennials are going to mm -hmm. be involved in some of these conversations. Oh, yeah. And a big part of what we want to do is help families facilitate the conversations that they need right. to have. So right. we're going to do a lot of talking about that. Right. And All um, generations. Right. Like. Yeah. And so what I'm thinking is that this is all uncharted territory yeah. that as we age, it's all new for us or it's new for us when we are helping our loved ones. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of catching up to do. And that's what the series is about is to help people kind of catch up 
and get some tools and resources so that they can deal with this phase of life mm -hmm. and uh, have maybe better outcomes and plan a future by design. Yeah, I like that, by design, right? Then rather than by, by default. default. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And that, you know, if you really want to be in control of your destiny, there's some planning that yeah. comes comes through that. Not just financial planning, right? I think right. Pe some people are used to doing financial planning, but they haven't done some of this other planning, mm -hmm. life planning. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to live? When am I going to move if I move? Um, who's going to take care of me if I need it? Mm -hmm. Who might I need to take care of in the future, right? Nobody, right. nobody seems to be planning as much for that as they are their financial future. Well, and if you think about how much we might plan on when a child starts kindergarten, what school mm -hmm. they're going to go to, what college they're going to go to, you kind of plan through your right. whole life for sure. sure yeah. And sometimes there's less thinking about... Um, a particular school than there is about what what happens next yeah you know I equate it to a uh, you're in Kansas I'm in Oklahoma so we're both used to having tornadoes and I, I often say to people do you have a plan if there were a tornado warning what would you do and they mm -hmm. all say yes mm -hmm. there's a basement like in this beautiful model home there's a basement you know or someone has a storm room or a safe room and I say, do you ever hope you have to use it and they're like oh no I never want to have to use it right but yet you have a plan. Right. And they're like, well, of course I have a plan. Uh -huh. Well, here's the thing. We're all going to get older. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. We're all trying to get older anyway. Mm -hmm. And so if we're all trying to get older and we all tend to get older, wouldn't it make sense to have a plan? And right. that's why I love what you're doing is you're helping people plan. Well, thank you. And I, I love that, that analogy. Now, in Kansas, we joke about when the storms come. Everybody goes to the front outside. You <laughs> grab your drink and you go outside. Yeah. But we still have a plan. Right. If Just it gets close case. enough, you would go down, right? Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While tornadoes may or may not hit, life hits everyone. Do you have plans to address what life throws your way? And where are the gaps? Planning a future by design helps prevent a future that just happens to you by default, where hasty decisions have to be made in an urgent crisis mode. Those aren't fun for anyone, and they prevent us from living our very, very best quality life. So it's okay to live for today, but also plan for tomorrow. Then we can share that plan with your friends and your loved ones, so our future is one by design, our own design. So let's talk about this, this series, um, because the seminar series that just a handful of us are doing around the country is very new mm -hmm. and I think this is the first television program maybe anywhere in the country certainly among our peers or mm -hmm. among anyone that we're aware of. It's the only one I know of. Yeah. Tackling senior topics mm -hmm. and so we're very proud of Wichita, yeah. Kansas and KPTS yeah. Public Television for bringing yeah. this program here. I am very proud and as well that you guys are doing this and here's the you. difference there may be some shows out there talking about people and their health and you know how to stay out of the hospital and that kind of thing mm -hmm. but your your approach is empowerment right it's planning ahead and mm -hmm. it's it's a different perspective so well and it's a perspective that is is for seniors right so that they can decide for themselves yeah. and so it's not about right. seniors right. but it's to help them yeah because so. they're smart people absolutely right? oh and i wanted to say too that the feedback that we've been getting from our seminars has been really interesting because out of our first seminar, Living to Be 100, mm -hmm. we had some great discussion and some of the feedback we got is that I learned that I had value and that was so touching to us because sometimes I think we forget our value mm -hmm. and uh, they learned that. So there was someone that went to your seminar who mm -hmm. learned through that seminar right. that they still had value. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's powerful. Because we talked about um, wisdom, that we all have wisdom to share right. and maybe some of the concepts like rather than retire from something, retire to something. Think nice. about how you can use your wisdom. Right. And we talked about memory jars um, yeah. that you can write down little snippets that you would like to um, maybe gift to someone, you right. know, just little things as you think about it and pop it in a memory jar. So we had a lot of great conversation and um, that was really something that we, we yeah. want, 
we want to honor our elders and, yeah. and we want to be honored. And we want to be honored. Exactly. Yeah. It's not going to be long before you and I are the That's... ones that are the elder. And I'm actually very proud of that. I look, mm -hmm. I look forward to it because mm -hmm. I know I have enough mentors in my life, uh, in the age groups, uh, 80 and beyond mm -hmm. that I, I'm not scared of it. I don't know about you, but right. Yeah. No, I'm not scared of it. And certainly, uh, this it. is good training for it yeah, right. uh, because I'm learning <laughs> right along with our attendees yeah. and with our audience by bringing brilliant people like you to share insight and wisdom uh, and we really appreciate you, thank you. I appreciate being that. here Nikki. Thank you. Most of all I'd like to thank our viewers and KPTS for helping us bring these conversations into people's homes. They're so important and we hope you help spread the word and you come back next time to Empowering Seniors. I'm Katherine Ambrose. This program is made possible by 46% of non-retirees believe they can't afford to retire. American Senior Benefits agents help retirees find solutions aiding your journey to retirement and financial security. More at wichita.americanseniorbenefits.com. Moving can be stressful. Whether your move is local or long distance, two men in a truck can help. More at twomen.com. King Senior Solutions, educating clients and offering solutions for Medicare beneficiaries. Personally selecting the plan that fits your needs. More at kingseniorsolutions.com.